And now to a Meet the Press exclusive, a journey to Guatemala with Kentucky Senator and Dr. Rand Paul. Top Republicans eyeing a run for president in 2016 have spent a lot of time in two key battleground states, 20 visits to Iowa, 10 more to New Hampshire. But so far, only Paul has turned a foreign country into a unique photo op. I accompanied him on his humanitarian mission to Salama, a remote town about three hours north of Guatemala City. But as you'll see, his trip to Central America may have been as much about the White House as it was about medicine. In a makeshift operating room in remote Guatemala, a side of Senator Rand Paul most people have never seen. The eye surgeon on a mission to help the blind and near blind see in a country where more than half the population lives in poverty. He's one of 28 American volunteers organized by the Moran Eye Center in Utah. But this is an amazing enterprise. We have a surgery center, we've got a dental clinic, and we've got a place doing glasses. Scores of people line up every day for a week, hoping American doctors can give them their sight and their lives back. A 79-year-old great-grandmother hasn't been able to walk for nine years. She's the cutest thing. Then cataracts plunged her into darkness. A farmer just wants to see again so he can work in his fields. A mission to restore sight and hope to the poorest of the poor. Thank you very much. And if it all plays well to American voters, it could further Rand Paul's personal mission too, to position himself for a race for president. I've been doing, you know, this kind of stuff for 20 years. But and not in a foreign so, country. Right. Well, I've been operating on kids from Guatemala for, you know, it, I think the first kids I operated on were 1996. This isn't something new that we're doing. You no, know, but she doesn't feel anything on this side of her face. A physician is who I am, and, you know, to represent who I am, that's who I am. I'm a physician. But you just won't always bring camera crews. Well, you know, depicting who I am, I think, is an important part of uh, presenting a face to the public. There is no doubt about the humanitarian aspect of this trip. Paul performed dozens of pro bono cataract surgeries over three days in a region where there are only two eye surgeons for 800,000 people. Chronicling it all are Paul's advertising team. I'm Rand Paul, and I approve this message. Whose TV commercials helped him with his upset win for Senate four years ago. Also along, a film crew from conservative super PAC Citizens United. Whoa, with equipment that included a drone for aerial shots, and its co-founder and president, Dave Bossie. Does having Citizens United Dave Bossie there make it look more political? I think if, 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 if having Citizens United documentary unit following him around, whether I was there or not, was going to do it. Um, and so, you know, I went um, to oversee it. I went to experience and see exactly for myself what Rand Paul was about. Bossy did some charity work of his own, helping to install a water filtration system. But he spent many hours with Senator Paul and gave advice to the film crew. For Paul, too, long hours in the OR were interspersed with interviews, multiple conversations with us over three days, where nothing was off limits, including the death of Michael Brown and the unrest that followed. Let's say none of this has to do with race. Just a day before, a farmer couldn't see through cataract clouded eyes. Then the eye patches come off. One of more than 200 success stories in a week, lives transformed. For all the successes here, Rand Paul was effective but not emotional, something that worries even supporters who know winning primaries is often as much about kissing babies as making policy statements. He reminds me of doctors I've had who are very matter of fact. And I think that's where he gets it. That, you know, he sees a problem, he's trying to fix it, and he moves on. But you wonder how that'll translate on the campaign trail. It, it could be very difficult. You Do go you to go places, to Iowa and not well, shake hands? That's, 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 I think, the next test. Dr. Paul's enthusiasm for medicine is palpable. And he's a guy who likes his odds when he's the one controlling the outcome. So if he runs for president, it will be because, like here in the OR, he thinks he's got a real chance of winning. So we'll go to work again today. <laughs> Before leaving, Senator Paul had a closed-door meeting with the president and prime minister of Guatemala and talked immigration, telling them the immigration problem...
He's also pushing to allow more Americans to adopt Guatemalan children. Let's get some reaction from the roundtable. Gwen Eiffel, co-anchor and co-managing editor of PBS NewsHour. David Ignatius, columnist for the Washington Post. Kasim Reed, Democratic mayor of Atlanta. And Michael Gerson, former speechwriter for President George W. Bush, now a columnist for the Washington Post. Welcome to all of you. David, could you see some of this in a convention bio, some of this footage, maybe in a little infomercial? You can see in the piece you just uh, did why Rand Paul is going to be a, a dynamic face in the Republican uh, nominating process. The rap on Rand Paul is that he's an isolationist. Uh, and to see him out in Guatemala helping people, not talking about carrying guns or dropping bombs, but uh, fixing people's eye problems, you know, that's the part of the pitch he's going to make. Whether the American people will trust this man who says, you know, I'm speaking to a country that's tired of war, with national security at a time of growing crisis is a big question. Yeah, well, question I asked him, Michael, was whether this changed his opinion about giving more foreign aid to countries in need, whether it changed his opinion about immigration. I don't think we're going to see a sea change there. Well, it is wonderful what he's doing. It is. But he's a senator and a possible presidential candidate, and his policy views matter. He's called for the gradual elimination of all foreign aid. Um, I've seen its effect in Sub-Saharan Africa and other places. This would cause misery for millions of people on AIDS treatment. It would betray hundreds of thousands of children receiving you know, malaria treatment. Um, th these are things that you can't ignore in a presidential candidate. This is a perfect case of how a person can have good intentions, but how an ideology can cause terrible misery. Um, he will need to explain that. This is his policy views. And there's substance and there's style, Gwen, and his style is pretty reserved. And you wonder if in 2016, if in the modern era, you can be the candidate who doesn't have that political charm, who doesn't do the retail He's saying politics. he's not charming. He certainly looked more at home in his scrubs than he does in the suits he wears on Capitol Hill. But it's interesting to, to look at, for instance, what he had to say about Hillary Clinton and what we, we heard you say to Mike Rogers earlier, heard Mike Rogers say to you, he thinks we should be doing more. He thinks we should be more forward-leaning, the chairman of the Intelligence Committee. Rand Paul is saying Hillary Clinton is a hawk. There are a lot of people in his own party who are looking at him and saying, Hold on a minute, brother. I don't know about that, including the fact Guatemala, even though he's been there before, is where a lot of the children are coming from who are crossing the border. Guatemala, Honduras, not Mexico. And so by being there at this moment in time with that debate still bubbling under the surface is not insignificant. Now I want to turn to the latest on Ferguson, Missouri. President Obama has called for a review of federal